Hello, welcome back for <clears throat> the second little part to lesson 3.2. We're learning about slope. And just a reminder that when we calculate slope, we can think of that in a couple different ways. We can think of that as our rise over our run. It's our change in Y over our change in X. Or in particular, we can think of it as the Y2 coordinate minus the Y1 coordinate over the X2 coordinate minus the X1 coordinate. <clears throat> so let's look at a couple examples. It says an object is traveling at a constant speed. The distance and time data are shown on the graph, um, the given graph. Use the graph to find the speed of the object. So we just need two points. So I'm going to list all five points that are here. That's 0, 20. Oh, darn it. That's 0, 0. Sorry, that's 0. 0.520. That's 1, comma, 40. That's 1.5, comma, 60. And that's 2, comma, 80. So this is the, the hours versus kilometers. So it takes 0. 0.5 hours. They can travel 20 kilometers. In two hours, they can travel 80 kilometers. So our slope, <clears throat> I'm going to show this in two different ways so that you can see <clears throat> that it doesn't matter what two points you pick, you will come up with the same slope. So I'm going to pick first these two points here. So 40 subtracting 20 over 1 subtracting 0. 0.5 is 20 divided by 0.5. <clears throat> is equal to 40 over 1. <clears throat> so it's 40 kilometers per one hour. Now I'm going to do this point and this point. So 80 subtracting 60 over 2 subtracting 1.5 is again 20 over 0.5 is again <clears throat> 40 over 1 kilometers per hour. So slope in this context is um, kilometers over hours, so 40 kilometers per one hour. So every one hour, they're traveling another 40 kilometers. <clears throat> OK, we have four coordinate points that we could use here that are integers. There's one in between here, but they're just not easy numbers to work with. So we've got 0, 0, 5, and 140. And this is minutes and meters. We've got 10 minutes and 280 meters. And then we've got 15 minutes and 420 meters. So I'm going to pick these two, so 0, 0, and 10, and 280. So I'll have 280 subtracting 0 over 10 subtracting 0 is 280 over 10, or 28 over 1. And that is minute, um, sorry, that's meters per minute. Then in the next one, I'm going to do these two points. So 420 subtracting 140 over 15 subtracting 5. So that becomes 280 over 10, which reduces to the same as the one above, which is 28 meters every minute. So it shouldn't matter what two points you pick, you should always come out to be the same slope. So let's look at example seven. <clears throat> example seven says, solve for the indicated variable if the line through the two given points has the given slope. Okay, so we know our slope is a negative three. And I'm going to take and do a negative six subtracting a negative two over four 
subtracting a. So this makes us think about how to solve for a letter, which we practice in chapter two. So let's see what we can simplify. We have a negative six plus two over four minus a, and then a negative three equals a negative four over four minus a. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by four minus a to cancel those out. And I'm gonna I'm gonna just take my work over here. So I have to distribute this negative three. So I'll have a negative 12 plus three a equals a negative four. Now it may be a little bit easier to solve for a. If we add 12, 3a equals 8, and then divide by 3, we get a is 8 thirds. And because we are mathematicians, we can prove it. So I am sharing my screen here and going to Desmos. And I'm going to put this in and just validate that we get a slope of three. So in my numerator, I have a negative six subtracting negative two. And then in my denominator, I have four subtracting and then eight thirds. And it does check out to be a negative three. Okay, let's look at the next one. So we have the slope is a negative four equals I'm going to take x squared minus 2, subtracting 7, over <clears throat> x, subtracting 3. Okay. So I need to get my x's together. And the only way I can do that is I'm going to multiply by x minus 3 on both sides. to cancel there. So I have to distribute again. <clears throat> and so we get a negative 4x plus 12 equals x squared minus 9. And I'm going to get everything to one side. So I'm going to add 4x. <clears throat> and then this is something we haven't really dove into yet. So I'm going to go ahead and complete it. When we don't have just an x, this is no longer linear because we also have an x to this 2x squared term. So we have to subtract 12 from both sides and get everything equal to 0. <clears throat> and then we would have to factor here. So again, this is a little more than what we've been um, doing at this point. So just follow along here. So for me to set this equal to zero, I need to factor these into terms that only have an X in them. So X plus seven and X minus three equals zero. And that's because over here, X plus seven times x minus three, they multiply to be x squared, which is what we have. And then if we get a negative three x and a positive seven x, when we multiply our FOIL and then a negative 21. And so there's our negative 21. And then our like terms in the middle add to be the four x in the middle. <clears throat> so once we have them factored, to solve for zero, 
either of these could be zero and the whole thing multiplies to zero. So that means either x plus seven equals zero or x minus three equals zero. One of the two can happen. And so that means either x is a negative seven or x is a positive three. And we will have a true statement. So catch me back for um, a little help on lesson 3.3. .3.